Hey, my name is Colin Summerhays. I'm uh, from the UK and my role is as the executive director of something called the Scientific Committee on Antarctic Research. That's a committee of the International Council for Science and it was formed at the end of the International Geophysical Year in 1957-58, which uh, was the third polar year, I think, and we're now in the fourth polar year. Anyway, the, the upshot is that during the IGY, uh, ICSU, the International Council for Science, realized that it needed a body to continue the coordinating the work on Antarctica that had been done during the International Geophysical Year. And so my organization, which goes by the acronym SCAR, was formed at that time. And so we're 50 years old next year. We'll be celebrating our anniversary. And our job is to, as I say, coordinate scientific research. But let me give you a bit more detail of what that means. All the individual countries interested in Antarctica have their own research program and many of them have their own bases or they have ships or they have aircraft. And so they're all very active with their national programs in different places. But no one of them has the power or the capacity to look at Antarctica as a whole or for that matter the southern ocean around Antarctica as a whole. So what we offer is a a means of facilitating pan-Antarctic research or research that covers the whole of the Southern Ocean so that these different countries can come together and uh, glue their different bits of research together in such a way that they get the really big picture. And that's what we do. We provide uh, money for working groups that bring small groups of scientists together uh, from different countries to enable them to talk about what they do and to plan work for the future. And we also, every couple of years, run a big major science conference. Um, the one last year was in Hobart in Australia, and we had about uh, 900 people turn up for that one. And the previous one, two years prior to that, was in Bremen in Germany, and for that we had about 1,100 people turn up. And the next one, which is next year, will be in St. Petersburg in Russia. And because it's a nice tourist sort of destination, <laughs> and it's July, we're expecting to get maybe uh, 1,500 people because it's quite close to a lot of European universities. So it's the kind of time when students will be interested and available to go and uh, attend a conference like that. And, and these conferences are just wonderful for networking, you know, getting people together over beer and a poster to talk about the exciting things they're doing and to enthuse other people with their research. So we're busy planning for that right now. And uh, I was in in Russia talking to the local organizers in September. Everything seems to be going well, so we're hopeful for a really good outcome on that conference. So those are, that gives you a flavor of the kind of raison d'etre for our organization and uh, the sort of thing that, that, that I do. Our scientists get together every two years at these meetings to plan the different working groups that are going to carry on work, for example, on albatrosses or on seals or on how the Southern Ocean works or on how the aurora um, works and all sorts of different things. Astronomy, upper atmosphere physics, oceanography, birds, geology, ice, climate history, all sorts of different projects uh, work under our sort of umbrella. So that's, that's what we do in terms of the science. We also try to set up mechanisms where people can uh, store the data that they collect on these individual um, national exercises and so that that data can be exchanged because the data is a really valuable heritage part of what we do. So data exchange is very important. We um, also have an important role in that we provide independent scientific advice to this body called the Antarctic Treaty. Every year the, the countries that are parties to the Antarctic Treaty meet in one or another of the, the countries that are signatories to the Antarctic Treaty and they need good quality independent scientific advice, independent of governments, that is. So we provide that. Um, let me just explain what relation we have to governments. Uh, we are responsive to the National Academies of Science, and they are independent of government. So in the UK, it's the Royal Society. In the US, it's the National Academy of Sciences, just for example. And so... Uh, that's the scientific community that we deal with, which explains why we're independent of government. So when we go to these intergovernmental meetings of the governmental parties to the Antarctic Treaty, we are completely independent and they can rely on us to give them very good advice about uh, 
how many albatross are dying because of fishing or whether or, whether or not the fur seals are recovering uh, and, and, and these sorts of questions, particularly questions about conservation in Antarctica uh, because that's one of the things that really concerns the governments. So that sort of advice is very important as well. And we also have a function in terms of training and education. We have uh, something called a fellowship program. Um, we put money on the table to enable young scientists to go from their home laboratory in one country to a major laboratory in another country to continue the research that they're doing with other partners that they might normally not meet. So this is a great opportunity for youngsters to actually get plugged into another scientific community other than their national one and when they're in that other country to build up networks to you know really get other people enthused about their research and and to learn about what everybody else is doing so these are great learning opportunities and for the future what we want to do is to expand that so that we can start attracting youngsters this would be uh, postgraduate researchers and postdoctoral researchers to come from countries that are not typically what you might call Antarctic countries. You know, think of uh, Iran, for example. You know, it's a country that has snow, so you have scientists there are interested in glaciology and that sort of thing, but um, they're, not plugged, they're not part of uh, SCAR. They don't work in Antarctica, but we can give them that opportunity. So through the International Polar Year, we've set up a joint program for... We have an, we have an IP wireproof project. It's a joint program between ourselves and the International Polar Federation in Brussels and UNEP and something called the International Antarctic Institute. And so we put out an advert to say, right, we are interested in, in offering this opportunity. Is there anybody out there that would like to avail themselves of this? And that fellowship program is slightly different from the one I just described because it will take somebody who's from one of these countries and actually take them to Antarctica and enable them to do research either in Antarctica at a base or on a ship that's doing research in the Southern Ocean. So we have agreements with several different countries uh, that they will offer their facilities, their ships, a berth on a ship or um, you know, a bed in a, in, a, in a station in Antarctica to enable those, those fellows to come and work on this. This is called the Sixth Continent Initiative. That's the name of the program. And uh, so that will be running for two years, and we hope that will stimulate the interest of people from outside our normal fraternity, you know, to come and see how exciting Antarctica is as a place and to learn the joys of, of working there. So that, that's, sort of the, that's sort of what I do.